become kinda a like billionaire. You have kids, like, it's, it's like, oh, I know, but they grow up so fast, so I just want to cherish these moments. It's like my pre-billionaire days. I just want to really own these because I know how easy it's going to be to lose sight of these when I oh, when God. I do become a billionaire. I so for the record, <laughs> I don't think that whatever I start is a guaranteed success. But to Sam's point, my my point was just that what I want to do is focus on gaining as many skills as possible so that when I take my shot, it's a good shot versus I see a lot of people who are like, it's time to drop out of college because I think I'm going to be successful. Steph, why, why are you I mean, not working yeah. for yourself? Why do you still have a job? Why are you working for these other companies? Why are you making guys like Sam rich? She's, she's got a good answer. So my answer, let's see if Sean thinks it's a good answer. My answer is that Currently, I get paid well to do things that I like, and I have the freedom to work on my side projects, which I do and is like a prerequisite to work anywhere. And so I personally like the financial stability and the mental stability knowing I get a good paycheck to do things I love. And then that means all of my side projects are purely for fun. Like, you know, the mm -hmm. like con or the common saying where it's like, you know, a full time job. No full time job is fun. Right. So if I made my passions, my full time job, full focus, then I actually don't think I'd have as much fun. So eventually I do want to work on my things alone, but I'm pretty happy with my setup. Yeah. But you, the second part you barely touched upon. So Sean, what she told me one time and she said it very clearly, she goes, yeah, I, I was like, are you going to start a business soon? She goes, yeah, I, I am. I'm just plotting because when I start it, I'm going to become a billionaire. And I just want to make sure that like, I'm ready for all that to happen. Uh, like, like she like very clearly told me like whatever she starts, it's going to become a billion dollar company. And she very was like, Kanye so I'm, ha I'm happy. <laughs> yeah. She was like, I'm ha she was like, I'm happy just to be doing this. What I love and building up like my bank account and savings. But when I do start something, um, I think I'm going to become a like billionaire. Have kids. Like, it's, it's like, Oh, I know, but they grow up so fast. So I just want to cherish these moments. It's like my pre billionaire days. I just want to really own these because I know how easy it's going to be to lose sight of these when I, oh, when God. I do become a billionaire. I, so for the record, I don't think that whatever I start is a guaranteed success. But to Sam's point, my my point was just that what I want to do is focus on gaining as many skills as possible so that when I take my shot, it's a good shot versus I see a lot of people who are like, it's time to drop out of college because I think I'm going to be successful. And I actually learned this from one of my very first jobs. I was like a contractor doing social media for a company. And it was this woman who was just like so poised, so put together and successful and she was probably around 35 and I asked her that same question I'm like why did you start your company now like why didn't you start it 10 years ago and she told me the same thing she's like Steph a lot of people miss the value of learning for you know years in their career from people who have a lot more experience than you and who can basically like teach you all of the obstacles that you can miss so that when she went into building this company which was a success off the ground she she just knew what she was doing, right? She wasn't stumbling around. So I kind of, I, I'm trying to embody that, that, that advice from that woman. I thought it was actually pretty wise. I'm going to disagree with that advice. <laughs> um, and the reason why I disagree, and I'm almost hesitant to even say this because, uh, you know, everybody should do what they want to do. And I, I fundamentally believe that. So, you know, uh, and if you're happy doing what you're doing, fantastic. It's not like a career advice to you. So I'm kind of talking to you, but I really, I'm just talking to like anybody who's listening to this, uh, which is the best way to build your skills so that you'll be successful when you go do that thing is to go do that thing now and just keep doing it until you figure yeah. it out. Figuring out other games to try to then parlay them into the game you want to play, that works when you didn't realize what game you want to play, right? So like, I learned a lot of skills in poker that helped me in business. But if I wanted to be great at business, I would do business, not poker. Um, it's just at the time I didn't know I wanted to do business. I thought I wanted to do poker. And so those skills, yes, they do tr cross over. They will help me for sure. Um, but like all the things you're saying sound good, sound reasonable. They're just a story that you're telling yourself. Like if you really wanted to go do that thing, you should go do the thing and you, the fastest way to get good at that. And to like, you know, be good right off the bat or like, you know, like, I don't know, Sam, you've done many businesses. I'm sure each time you do one now. You have a higher likelihood of success than you did before, but it's not like you just do them and they just magically work now because you've, you've, you've crossed the magical threshold of skills and knowledge and wisdom that now mean businesses that you start will succeed. No way. Right. It's like, and it's always changing. Every market's different. Every business is different. Timing is always different. And so like the reality is if you, 
if you're doing it to build up skills, you're building the wrong skills. The skills to build is to go do, if you're building up skills to go start a business, the best way to build that skill is to go start businesses. Um, these skills that you have today will help you. Don't get me wrong. It's just not the, op like you're taking the long path rather than the, the direct path. Um, that's kind of my, my pushback. I think I have something in my contract where I Say can't, anything. uh, <laughs> I can't comment. I can't persuade. <laughs> I can't persuade. Is it there's some, don't I have like a thing in my contract where I can't like poach our, yeah, uh, our past, our past people. Yeah. yeah so I, I can't really say too much except, uh, I think Steph should do whatever makes her happy. And she's pretty much capable of doing anything she wants. And by the way, all right, so. guys, I quit. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm done. <laughs> You know, the, the other thing is that not everybody actually wants to be an entrepreneur. There's a whole bunch of ways to have uh, like the fun of business building without the stress of business building. And so like for some people, I think that's the honest answer is like, actually, I want to work in a small team. I don't want to go to sleep every night worried about how to make the whole fucking thing work. I like that you go to sleep worried about that. And I worry about my part and I enjoy my part. Like, and that's the trade I want to make. And I think that like more people should be honest when that's the case for them. And they say, you know, right now at this phase of my life, I don't want that stress. That's That to me means more than like, I'm building my skills up, right? It's like, because once you do commit to doing a business, it is, you know, there's no like kind of way, there's, you know, there's not really an easy way out. And, um, you know, it's a pretty full on commitment. And I don't think you should just make full on commitments unless you like want to and are ready to and are down to deal with like the pros and cons of, of that. And so like, I have a bunch of people who work for me that I tell them, I say, look, there's like three scenarios here. Either you suck and you're fired. Um, you're great and you're you're great and you're going to realize you're great and you're going to grow here, right? So you're great and you're going to grow. Your impact's going to grow. Your comp's going to grow. Your your rewards are going to grow here. Or we're going to realize that like you're you need to be doing your own thing. In which case, you know, I'll be your first kind of like backer, investor, or I'll partner with you on something in some way. And I just try to be honest with people. Like I, I kind of only want you to land in one of those three spots. Uh, there's not really like another spot. The, there's not really like another landing destination. Like this flight only goes those three places. And so, you know, choose which one, you, which one you want. I think that's smart though, because a lot of businesses treat people like there's like 10 outcomes and they kind of slot people like, oh, you're pretty good. So we'll keep you around. Or like, you're not that bad. So we're not going to fire you. But really like if you're trying to operate a business effectively, it should be mostly those three outcomes. Like you're either amazing, you're driving value. So we want you around. We're going to incentivize you to do that. Or like there's probably somewhere better for you 